Imagine a whiskey tuber absolutely praising the hell out of a bottle, giving it whiskey of the year, and then not releasing a video review of it for over a couple of years. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Old Jeff Whiskey here is finally pulling his finger out and talking about his Whiskey of the Year 2021. Welcome back Whiskey people, I'm Jeff, this is Whiskey, let's crack on. Jeff Whiskey. So, Lefroy 10 Sherry Oak Finish, it is really good. As mentioned in the Whiskey of the Year video, I got this as a sample back in 2020 and was possibly my first foray into Laphroaig and I was absolutely smitten by it. It is put together in the same way as the Classic 10 but then finished in sherry casks. I'm not sure for how long but that sherry rich burgundy colour has really seeped into it. Either way, let's start reviewing this bottle and start with the experience. So I'm going to do a little deep dive here and talk about the brilliant marketing by Lefroig. Fully embrace the unique characteristics and flavour of this malt and they have turned it into a killer marketing move. The adverts, which somehow are not scripted, oh. show the honest reactions to it, where they list flavours which create a whole story around the whiskey. It's like being slapped in the face with a smoked fish. Burnt necker. As a man who puts out stupid, ludicrous and pompous notes, this is my jam. I can even smell the seagulls on pits. <laughs> the Lefroig friend system they have, or friends of Lefroig, Lefroig family, whatever it's called, it's a really great idea. And having the plot of land that comes with a bottle, it's a really alluring gimmick, which is easily forgotten by whiskey enthusiasts, but early doors into your journey, that's a real good selling point. You've charmed me. I pre-poured this and I've realised how stingy I've been with myself, probably because I can't afford another. But the colour is almost burgundy in hue and while it doesn't stay on the bottle, it was confirmed by the distillery that it is natural colour. The super clean branding which has subtly been improved over the years into this heritage drenched logo type, it really scales well and the changes they've made over time, while really subtle and probably not noticeable, have done a great job in modernising it. The bottle itself is simple, you can clearly tell it's a Froig with the white label and green glass bottle. It is right on their brand and the last thing to do is see how it does in the old slappity slap test. That's tough. I'm gonna to start either using a fake hand or at least start wearing protection. Hey guys, it's Wade here from McIntyre's Malts and my man Jeff from Jeff Wesker has asked me to come and slap a bottle with you guys. So I wanted to share a cautionary tale about the last time I slapped a bottle. Please be careful, whiskey lovers. A one night slap can last a lifetime. Even old King Charles is giving it a thumbs up with his sausage hands. I can even smell the seagulls on pits. So therefore it's gonna have to be a big six out of six on the experience. So now it's time to give it a sniff. The peat rapidly flies up the nose while still being quite gentle at first. Does that make sense? Then after a couple sniffs, it really slaps you about with that metallic, plaster, medicinal smoke. There really is so much sweetness balanced in here as well. It really is perfectly balanced. It's perfectly balanced and it's very beautiful. I'm getting crunchy seaweed, uh, hoisin drenched dunk wraps. Maybe I'm just hungry. It's like pork on a spit uh, covered in cranberry sauce. It kind of goes a bit 
off note, like a bacon and brie panini. Yeah, I'm definitely hungry. As you sniff, the peat starts to dial back, letting the mix of savoury and sweet hang in the air. You do start to find this burning rubber note. I'm not talking like doing donuts in a car park, but maybe like using a lighter to burn a school rubber. It's a super solid and great nose and it's almost perfect, but it's gonna have to be getting five out of six Jeffs. Now it's time to drink and talk about the taste. Cheers. When that saying of it's a meal in a glass is thrown around, this is it. It's not like a Slimming World milkshake, but it's a free course meal for the senses. I'm getting sticky, slightly burnt barbecue pork ribs, uh, maple syrup on bacon. It's a bit metallic as well. Sweet bacon soup being served from a rusty spoon. If that's not a thing, dibs I get 50%. I like rusty spoons. There is some like spiky pineapple hanging in there and like some more juicy fruits hanging about. There's warm jam donuts with that mix of sweet, peat, jam, juice. Oh, it's great. We get it! Oh, it's sweet, spice, everything nice with this like tar-like thickness. Didn't plan on drinking all that. Either way, it ends with a warm, warm wet smoke in the back of your throat and it really holds this kind of oaky dryness and still this jammy sweetness. When I popped this review on my nowadays slightly ignored website, it came out of five out of six on the taste. But right now I can't find any reason to not give it the full score, six out of six Jeffs. Right, so time for the money talks. Let's go to the value. At around £60, it is not cheap, especially compared to the standard 10 being able to be picked up at under 30. These are different beasts. The higher ABV and the sherry finish transforms this into a whole new beast. I've been recently listening to some whiskey folk on different podcasts and YouTubes, and for them, they would describe this as a mid-range price. The noise is canceled, and so are broke people. <laughs> but for me, I would 100% call it expensive. Now I paid a bargain, 43 pounds via pour and sip back when you can use their point system to get further discounts on their already discounted member store. And I wish I bought two or three for that price. I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. I've seen it appear just above 50 on offer, which is a very fair price for it. And in honesty, I don't think I can really argue that much with a 60 pound price tag either. Therefore, it's gonna be a very respectable four out of six Jeffs. Now, depending on how I feel when I put the leaderboard graphic together, we may have a new number one, because this is coming in at a very big 21 Jeffs. So there you have it. I finally covered my Whisk of the Year 2021. I have said before, I'm gonna go back and do past Whiskies of the Year reviews, and some when I was really early into my journey. Get on with it then. If you've enjoyed this review or found it helpful, pop a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, let me know what you think of this bottle. I think all that's left to say is thanks for watching. Cheers for the next one. It's not really a strong finish, is it? That's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. Woo!